Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In our previous tutorial, that is this tutorial, we introduced inverse problems while solving Burgers equation using physics and form on neural networks. In this tutorial, we have estimated the viscosity parameter along with the main solution u of x comma t. This present video tutorial is a continuation of that series, but this time we are stepping up the challenge. Instead of a single unknown, we are solving a system of coupled ordinary differential equations with two unknown parameters c1 and c2 in many real world scenarios systems are generally governed by multiple interacting differential equation instead of single equation you take any problem actually equations from the structural mechanics equation from the thermodynamics or wherever you will see a set of governing ordinary or uh, partial differential equations that are governing the system. These systems often have many unknown parameters, for example, reaction rates in chemical kinetics, damping coefficients in mechanical systems, or some interaction terms in biological models. In this tutorial, we will see how pins can be effectively used to solve such uh, multi-equation, multi-parameter problems. Multi-equation, multi parameter problem. So here in this tutorial, we are going to consider uh, two uh, ODEs with two unknown constants C1, C2. The exact values of these coefficients for uh, C1 and C2 are C1 is equal to 2 and uh, C2 is equal to 1. But our pin model does not know this. Instead, we will start from a random guess and we will learn to estimate these values purely based on physics and observed data for these two equations so we have two primary unknowns they are x of t comma y of t and two secondary unknowns they are c1 and c2 so the analytical solution for these two equations are this x of t and y of t as we have discussed in our earlier tutorial so in order to find out these two constants along with these equations and the boundary conditions we need some sort of data that can be a experimental data or a simulation data or a sensor data or some data to use in the loss function to constrain these parameters actually in this tutorial i'm using the data that is obtained from this analytical solution as the observed data to evaluate the data loss but many real world problems we don't have analytical solutions normally when uh, we are dealing with inverse problems we rely on experimental data or simulation results but for this problem i am using analytical solution as synthetic data to demonstrate the methodology in a clear and a controlled way this allows us to focus on understanding how pins work and how they estimate unknown parameters based on the data loss minimization here i am importing uh, two libraries numpy and uh, matplotlib and uh, here I am uh, setting some plot controls for a better visualization purpose. Here I am assuming some uh, t value uh, between 0 and 5. So overall 500 values I am taking. And uh, here I am evaluating the x analytical and y analytical solutions. And I am plotting them here actually. If you look at here, this is our x of t and uh, this is our y of t. This x of t and uh, y of t is derived using these two values. C1 is equal to 2 and C2 is equal to 1. But in our current problem in the physics and form neural network problem we don't know this value using our physics and form neural network optimization we have to find out these two parameters and uh, the equations for this x of t and uh, y of t now that we have understood uh, the basic problem setup and uh, the analytical solutions involved in these equations so let's talk about an important concept that is this uh, loss function which is very important aspect of training a pin model in traditional machine learning, loss functions are usually based on the data like mean squared error for regression or cross entropy loss for classification, etc. But in pins, especially when solving inverse problems, we use both data and differential equations that are governing the physics of the problem. Primarily, this loss function is designed to ensure that the neural network learns solutions that satisfy the physics of the problem. So this is our uh, total loss function anatomy. So here, if you look at here, our loss function consists of three main terms actually. So the first one is the residual loss. Second one is the initial condition loss. And the third one in the red color is the data loss. These are the two equations, two main uh, governing differential equations. So if we, if we take some solution x, n n of t y n n of t and if you put them here in this problem and assume some c1 and 
C2 values. So we are expected to get, let's take these two as LHS. In each equation, the LHS must be equals to zero, but uh, in the optimization process, it's very difficult to get zero, but we will try to achieve some value that is close to zero. That's what we are doing it here actually. So fx of t is equals to dx by dt plus c1 x of t plus y of t. This is our first residual equation and this is our second residual equation. And here n represents the collocation points. So we evaluate these two equations at all the collocation points that we consider in the domain for time. So we evaluate on the x of t and y of t at all of these points and we square it and sum it to get the mean squared error. Similarly, we evaluate the mean squared error for the second equation as well. After we evaluate uh, the mean squared error uh, residual loss for the governing differential equation, next objective is to set up the initial condition loss. If you look at here, we have two initial conditions. For x at 0, it is equals to 1 and for y at 0 is equals to 0. So we are using these two conditions. So x of 0 minus 1 is equals to 0, y of 0 is equals to 0. That's what we are doing it has here actually. So the initial condition loss for x is equals to x of 0 minus 1 whole square. For y is equals to y of 0 minus 0 means nothing. So we are taking a square of it. So these two are our two initial condition losses. And the next one is the data loss. So as I said before, we are taking the data derived from the analytical solution as the synthetic data and we are using that to evaluate the data loss. So here x ti is our uh, solution and uh, this one is the analytical solution value, analytical solution value at ti. So when we put this ti time instance in the analytical solution, we get some value and uh, similarly we use at the same time step, we evaluate uh, the pin solution value and take a difference and square of it at all the interior collocation points that we have considered. Those are ND. So this data is obtaining from the analytical data, right? So you can have as many points as you want. Similarly, we are uh, evaluating the data loss for uh, Y of T, the second equation. So this is the data loss for uh, X of T and this is the data loss for Y of T. So likewise, we evaluate uh, the losses for the PD residuals the initial conditions and the datas. So if we sum up all these uh, loss equations, we will get the total loss. If, if you look at uh, our total loss, it has two residual loss, initial condition loss, and this is the data loss. That's it. Combining all these three to get a total loss and we will minimize this to solve for x of t and y of t. This is our main code. Here I'm importing some libraries like torch and from this torch I'm importing this neural network module. Here we are defining the main neural network configuration. So here I'm defining this with the two hidden layers, each with 64 neurons. Here we have one input variable and two output variables. So the input is t, output is x and y. So if you look at here, I am defining this as C1, C2 as two trainable parameters actually. So C1 and C2 are learned in this training process along with weights and biases. In the same way we optimize these weights and biases, we will use the same methodology to optimize this C1, C2 as well. So here we are defining the main loss function. So here if you look at here, this loss function takes model t, t data, x data and y data. We will see what these things are. So here first I am initializing this t with require grad is equals to true. This uh, allows us to compute derivatives with respect to t. So here I am using the model to make the predictions. This prediction has two variables that is x and y I'm storing here in this separate arguments and here using this uh, torch dead autograd function I'm evaluating dx by dt and uh, dy by dt. So using these two values and this model dot coefficient this model has two parameters right learnable parameters so they are this coefficient c1 and coefficient c2. So I'm just extracting these two from the model and I'm putting them in this main residual equations. And here I'm evaluating this residual x and residual y. And by performing this square and taking out the mean, so and summing up these two for x and for y, I'm just evaluating this PDE loss. After that, here I'm evaluating the initial condition losses for x and y, followed by here for this t data. T data is the data that 
we are using to extract the observed data for this uh, data loss function evaluation actually so here you can use the same t or t data separate data that's fine actually you can take these two same or a different that's not a problem but whatever the data you take when you put the data in this model it will give you x comma y and using these two x comma y so i am using this pred data and y pred data with comparing this uh, x data and uh, y data i'm evaluating this data loss so overall combining this uh, pde initial conditions and uh, data loss we are evaluating the total loss and uh, this total loss we have to minimize in order to achieve a proper solution for both x comma y and c1 c2 here i am uh, defining the train function so this train function takes model optimizer t t data x data and the number of epochs and uh, here i am defining the i'm calling the loss function and uh, performing some uh, neural network operations such as backward propagation and optimization and for every 500th epoch i am just printing the epoch value and the loss value c1 c2 uh, predictions actually and uh, here i am initializing this model pin in this model and i am setting up this uh, optimizer as adam optimizer with a learning rate here this learning rate is uh, used for evaluating the weights and biases along with that we are using the same learning rate to optimize this c1 c2 as well and uh, here i am initializing some data t data x data y data and uh, i am converting them to tensors and then i am passing them to this uh, train function and the overall i have created around 15000 uh, epochs actually so overall as we look at here at the epoch 0 your loss function is some around some 15 and the c1 c2 values are 6.77 and the c2 value is 2.75 in the in the end around some 14500 epoch our loss function value is 1.26 10 to the power of minus 5 and our c1 value is 1.98 and c2 value is 0.99 this is very close to 2 and this is very close to 1 and here i am doing some testing on our model so the true value and the, the x true value and y true value for this tests are evaluated here for comparing this uh, pin solution with the analytical solutions actually so here i am printing up this uh, learned coefficients so this learned coefficient c1 and c2 are uh, the predicted values from the neural network and these two are our reference values so generally this is a coding cell and uh, this is a markdown cell so generally we cannot pass uh, the value from the code to this markdown in our uh, regular format actually that's why i have created a markdown table within the python code itself and then i am uh, displaying that markdown table using this uh, ipython display function wherein i have imported uh, markdown and uh, display modules actually so using this two i am i am displaying these values in the form of a table like this actually so here the learned value is 1.99 and the reference value is 2 overall the accuracy that we have got is 99.7 99.42 for c2 so overall the accuracies are pretty good and uh, when we plot the x of t and uh, y of t against uh, the true values that is the analytical solutions this is how our predictions looks like actually so our spin solution for x of t and y of t are pretty close to the analytical solution so overall this is how we solve a multi equation with multiple unknown parameters using uh, physics informed uh, neural networks so i hope you found this tutorial useful and uh, you now have got a deeper understanding about how pins can be used for uh, this kind of inverse problems if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like share and subscribe to support the channel it really helps us in creating more content like this for you and if you have any doubts or suggestions please comment them below i would love to hear from you thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorials thank you happy learning